resuming debate, the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. As I said at the outset, I'm running for Prime Minister to put Canadians back in control of their lives by making Canada the freest nation on earth. And that freedom includes bodily autonomy, the freedom to decide what people put in their own bodies. And that is why I was proud to introduce a private member's bill in the House of Commons that would put an end to COVID mandates in all of the federal sector. Uh, I want to thank the Honourable Member from Niagara West for having adopted my private member's bill so that we could move it forward even faster. Now, before the Prime Minister proceeds once again to maliciously divide and attack, let, us, let me remind him that the position put forward in this bill is now the position not only of conserv common sense Conservatives, but it is also the position of the majority of provincial governments, of the Liberal member for Louis uh, Saint uh, Louis Hubert, of the Military Review Complaints Commission, the tribunal responsible for hearing grievances from members of the armed forces. And I will remind the position of the Prime Minister that the position reflected in the bill is now his position. Now, you might under, uh, question why I would say that, and the reason is that he had the temerity to go on television about three months ago and claim he had never forced anyone to get vaccinated, that he claims that it should be a matter of personal choice. He wanted us all to forget the way he divided and insulted and name-called millions of people right across this country, patriotic, law-abiding, decent people. So if he really believes he never forced mandates on anyone, surely he'll be happy to vote for this bill to ensure that those mandates don't apply anymore and will never be reimposed again. So let me be clear about what this bill does. Uh, we start with what it will do. This bill targets the unreasonable overreaches of the federal policy and unjustified abuses of federal government power. The bill targets these overreaches and abuses of power based on two different but important types of evidence. First, it follows the scientific evidence about COVID-19 vaccines, how they work, what they do. And second, it responds to the evidence from the experience of this government's decision to exploit a public health situation for partisan political gain. This was most clear in the Prime Minister's deliberate decision to go, go beyond guiding and protecting Canadians to punishing people who chose not to take the COVID-19 vaccine. Let us remember that the Prime Minister originally said that vaccines would be a matter of personal choice. Then he did a poll showing that it would be popular to target a small minority of people who chose not to be vaccinated. He flip-flopped. And, and, and said he would then make it mandatory. Three days later, he called an election and attempted to exploit that political moment in order to regain power. It's funny, well, when he announced that the vaccine mandates would be imposed on the federal sector, he did it with such political haste based on the advice of not public health experts, but of polling experts, that even his own human resources team at the Treasury Board had put out guidelines suggesting that it would be a matter of personal choice, not mandatory imposition. So while he was advocating for a mandate, his own bureaucracy had published rules against a mandate. That is because they were following the science, they were following the medical science, he was following political science. That's right. This was. What this bill will do is put into law a prohibition on the government imposing COVID mandates again in the future. Now, you might wonder why the government would need such a prohibition, given that they have reluctantly agreed to remove mandates from most federally employed workers. The answer is that the government has kept open the possibility of reimposing mandates both on federal workers and on federally regulated travel. 
Furthermore, there continue to be military service members who face vaccine mandates even today. It is ironic that these same military service members could go into a, legally, go into a bar and French kiss with a perfect stranger, but they could not do their jobs in the armed forces. How is that scientifically sound? They could not, for example, go out into a field and practice with their fellow members in infantry, but they could do things that involve far greater and more intimate personal interaction in public places according to the law. How could that possibly be based on science? We know that it, not, it is not and never was because we also now know that the military grievance tribunal has ruled that the government's imposition of mandates on service members violated Section 7 charter rights of those members and that that violation was not justified under Section 1 of the Charter, which gives the government the ability to override rights in order to uphold reasonable, uh, um, uh, re reasonable um, public interest requirements. So the government's own grievance tribunal has found that the mandates violated the Charter when it comes to members of the armed forces, and yet still the mandates re remain in place in vi open violation of the Charter rights, not according to the Leader of the Opposition, not according to the countless civil libertarians who have been advocating for an end to these mandates, but according to the government's own grievance tribunal, and according now moving out of the military to the rest of the federal sector, to the PIPSCC, the CAPE, and PSAC, three public sector unions representing 300,000 federal public servants who have brought legal challenges against this government, saying its blanket policy was punitive, unreasonable, and an abuse of management authority. To quote the unions, there was no proper consultation nor a comprehensive process of to correctly identifying the possible circumstances faced by our members. Appropriate solutions were not developed by the employer to deal with many individual situations, end quote, quote. But the Prime Minister didn't listen to them. He continued to go forward firing federal employees who were not vaccinated, and he kept this policy in place even after his public health officer said, and I quote, that we need to get back to normalcy. And I'm going to go back to quoting the Military Grievances External Co Review Committee on this point. I conclude that the limitation of the griever's right to liberty and security of the person by the Canadian Armed Forces vaccination policy is not in accordance with the principles of fundamental justice because the policy in some aspects is arbitrary, overly broad and disproportionate. Therefore, I include that the griever's rights to protect to be uh, rights protected under section 7 were infringed. And yet that policy goes on. I find that termination of service members for some, of service for some members was a disproportionate response to their non-compliance with the vaccination policy. I conclude that it was overly broad and not using the least restrictive option in its implementation. I find that the disputed provisions of the CAF vaccination policies are unconstitutional and therefore invalid. This is the government's own grievance tribunal who says this, and yet. Our heroes, soldiers who loyally served, who followed the law, who committed, who put their lives on the line for this country, are out of jobs, out of income, and out of justice. My bill and the bill now adopted by the member for Niagara would restore that justice by putting an end to vaccine mandates and uh, COVID vaccine mandates and ensuring that no such new mandates are reimposed in the future, either for our brave soldiers sailors or airmen, our public servants, or Canadians seeking to travel in federally regulated sectors, Mr. Speaker. Right. Mr. Speaker, the, the Prime Minister has withdrawn and apologized for some of the extremely incendiary and divisive comments that he made about Canadians who made different medical decisions than he would have made. And this is adopting this bill would be a recognition that this ugly chapter in our history of turning Canadian against Canadian and using a public health matter to, to pull apart our country and, and grab more power will be permanently behind us. 
Let us re recognize that Canadians have freedom of choice over the, what they put into their body. Let us adopt this legislation. Let us restore personal freedom. Let us give Canadians back control of their lives in the freest nation on earth. Thank you.